So I've been looking for a product that I can use where I can remotely monitor my devices. My devices being each battery bank, the inverter, and the solar coming in. So Solar Assistant, you can connect to your Wi-Fi and you can remotely monitor all of your whole entire system all off of the internet. But it's just a place where it's gonna put all the information into one location, which is gonna make it substantially easier to monitor and see what is going on with your system. So with the Solar Assistant, you can buy a preloaded Raspberry Pi and it just comes like this. And we have a bunch of ports for your power and we have USBs. And on the new Raspberry Orange, we actually have an HDMI out where we can hook up a screen and have a display screen somewhere nearby that we can watch and see the graphs and see the dials and see what's going on on the fly. You can also just purchase the software itself and then load it into a Raspberry Pi on your own. I didn't do that. I chose to go the route of just buying a preloaded one. I'm not very tech savvy. Now for the screen monitoring, which is a big reason why I bought this, is I bought a 10 inch display. This is a 10 inch touch screen display. So this is actually gonna allow me to go in and change settings right here at my cabinet. This is just a bare bones display. Like as you can see, there's no frame, there's no nothing. It's just the glass screen and you can see all of the circuitry and everything on the back here. So my plan is, is I installed this door here onto the cabinet and you can open and close it. So this is gonna make a perfect spot to put my Raspberry Pi and all the associated uh, wiring that's gonna go along with it can all get zip tied and secured in this location. And then once I close this door, I'm gonna cut a hole in this door and actually mount this screen on the door itself. And then that way I can just come up and touch things and change settings and do whatever and monitor. And I think it's gonna make a really cool display piece as well. So the first thing I need to do is I'm gonna remove this door panel and then I'm gonna measure out the size of my screen. I'm thinking I might just go maybe like an eighth of an inch wider than the screen portion and then mount it from the back and have it so that it's easy accessible. So I'm gonna mark this door out now and then I'm gonna cut my hole and start to mount the display on this door panel. Okay, now my hole is cut for the screen. Now I did a border of yellow and I only used one layer of painter tape when I went around. So it's giving kind of like a little bit, uh, like an abstract kind of uh, border around it, which I kind of actually like a little bit. So I think I might just keep it. I don't think I'm gonna fix that up. It's kind of like a little unique thing. So I have the hole cut. I have the holes cut for the screws that are gonna come through to hold the screen to the front side. Next, I'm gonna mount the screen to this cover plate and the glass is gonna be pushing against the back side of this. So I don't want the glass and the metal pushing against itself because there's a chance that it could scratch or break the glass. So I bought, I bought, this is just like 16 inch, uh, 16th inch uh, weather stripping. It's like a neoprene. So I'm gonna put that border on the inside and then have the screen pushed against that. So that's gonna help protect the screen a little bit. Screen is mounted. It looks sick. So I kind of like it because the roughness of it, it almost like reminds me of like a video game or something. Like, you know, something you would see out of like an apocalyptic video game. That's kind of neat. I like it. It looks really cool. So on the back side here, I just ran bolts through and I have like these offset kind of washers and I just literally hand tighten them down. The neoprene that's uh, keeping the glass off of the metal is stopping it from sliding or moving around, which is really nice. So I'm gonna mount this up back onto the rack and then I wanna hook up the Raspberry Pi and turn the screen on and see what it looks like. <laughs> that is super cool. Oh, that is sweet. That is awesome. Okay. Let's get this baby turned on. Okay, I have it temporarily hooked up and I'm ready to plug in the screen. So let's turn the Raspberry Pi on and close this door. No signal. 
And come on. Oh, it's starting. I'm going to bring you in closer. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That is awesome. So I don't have anything connected right now. But like, look at that. What? Okay, so I now have a touchscreen solar assistant. That is so cool. So I have, I have nothing logged, but you get the idea. I gotta plug some stuff. I gotta get this thing working. So now look at this. Like I can close this door and I can be in the garage and I can walk by and look and okay, yeah, I've got uh, this much inverter, this much solar, this much battery. I can even move it up so I can see a certain section and then just leave it there, close the door. Um, the only issue that I've had with this solar assistant is the Raspberry Pi after about five minutes, the screen goes blank. And then I have to actually touch the screen for it to come back on. Now, you can set the parameters on the Raspberry Pi to disable this, but I cannot do it because this Raspberry Pi was preloaded on the hard memory. It's not on the SD card. So I can't change the parameter to keep the display on all the time. Um, I have tested it with other displays. It, it reacts the same no matter what display I'm using, whether it's the touch screen or not. I have reached out to Solar Assistant and they are having their engineers look into it and see if they can somehow have that uh, feature disabled to where the screen blanks out. Now what I was gonna do was I was gonna use, I was gonna use a little switch like one of these and all I was going to do was cut into the USB cable that goes to the touch screen, take the red cable and splice in a switch, and then either mount that on the outside of the cabinet or on that faceplate. And then that way I can just turn the display on and off manually and it's not going to affect the solar system. So now you can see the screen's been inactive for like five minutes. So now if I touch the screen, it comes back on. But I would much prefer if the screen just stayed on the whole time and I can manually turn it on and off by installing a switch. So I bought the unit that comes with the 48 volt to, I believe it's five volt uh, input for the solar assistant. So it'll run off the batteries and the display is powered by the USB that controls the touch screen as well. So the display is powered by the Raspberry Pi. I'm gonna try now an unpowered USB uh, to see if I can make some connections. And now I'm going to use the DB9 to USB cord and plug that in. Now, configuration. Let's go to battery, disconnect, and connect. Okay, and we are now connected. So it's saying the battery is at 99%. Now let's see if I can connect a second battery, which this one uses an RS-232 to DB9. Okay, now let's go to our battery selection and let's uh, disconnect from this battery. Go to my USB serial RS-232, save, and there we go, now we're connected. So now this battery is at 60%. So what this is gonna allow me to do is to connect to each battery because I have multiple brands, I can connect one at a time. Um, I am gonna be installing the Victron Smart Shunt in order to get an overall capacity of the whole entire bank. But this is gonna be nice because then I can come on and I can see all the different parameters of each battery temperature wise, state of charge, and a bunch of fun facts. So. Uh, yeah, I'm going to work on wire management and uh, look out for the next video. I'm going to be hooking up all the battery connectors. Uh, it's just I'm waiting for lugs in the mail. So look forward to that. That's going to be a real nice clean install. And thank you for watching. Bye.